My name is Dr. Pravin C. Patel, <coughs> retired as a scientist on an agriculture university in Anand Gujarat. Today, I will give the information to the dairy farmer. Hybrid Napier grass, a boom to forage production. Hybrid Napier grass may be boom for dairy industry on account of supply of adequate green powder of high nutritional value with round the year availability and minimum expense on repeated forage cultivation. So Hybrid Napier is a perennial grass and once we are transplanted, it remains for three, four years. Fodder is a cheap source of nutrient supply than concentrate feed. It needs to give more emphasis so as to make the dairy industry economical viable option. In India, limited land, 8.6 million hectares is available for fodder cultivation. And our country may face the shortage of both green as well as dry matter by about 61.1 and 21.95 respective region. So productivity of high vinifier grass in India. So in India, there are 16, 17 centers on all India corn research project on forage crops. So in uh, Gujarat, we have one presentation, main forage dissertation, then Tamil Nadu Agricultural University, then the main presentations of India, Indian Grassland Border Research Institute, Jansi, UP. So they have tested the high wind apiar grass. And you can see that the performance of all the different varieties, APBN1, going to 3, CO1, CO2, CO4, and IGFRI 10. So the yield ranges from 150 to 350 metric ton per hectare in 7 to 8 crop per year. But here it is the latest variety, Super Napier, evolved at Thailand. And the production is 500 metric ton per hectare per year. So it is a world record and super napier, high napier is popular throughout the India as well as many countries of the world. <clears throat> Comparative performance of APBN1, Andhra Pradesh Bajra Napier 1 and that experiment was conducted at Anand Agriculture University, main for dissertation. So they have taken three variety. APBN1, CO1, IJ for I7. So the green highest among three varieties, APBN1 had produced highest green powder yield, 634.2 ton per hectare in three years. Similarly, it was remained top for dry matter crude protein yield. Whereas CO1 and IJ for I7 have been appear produce the lower green powder dry matter crude protein yield during three years. Napier grass is also called as elephant grass because it grow very fast due to its tallness and vigorous vegetative growth. IBN napier grass is tropical perennial grass, more succulent, grow faster, leafy fine texture, palatable, fast growing, and rot resistance. You know that uh, in Gujarat, National Dairy Development Board is there, and they are doing also the research work on border crops. So they have the one farm, and we have visited that farm, and they have grown super napier. So you see the growth of the super napier. Which type of soil is required for a hybrid napier? So we can see the package of practices in short. So hybrid napier can grow on a variety of soil. It does not thrive well on water log and flood prone land, lands. It requires water, but it does not require water log condition. So it is not suitable in 
the alkali soil or sodic soil the land preparation one this plowing may be followed by two to three for plowing leveling and removal of clods basal application of farm yard manure is done before preparation of bridges bridges are made across slope for as possible at a spacing of 60 cm you can see here with a height of 25 cm for easy irrigation so we can apply irrigation easily manuring so farm yard manure at the rate of 25 metric ton per hectare before plowing it require 50 kg nitrogen 50 kg phosphorus and 40 kg npk per hectare and it should be applied as basal application application of azospirillium and phosphobacterium along with 75% second dose of fertilizer of n and p fertilizer increase yield and saving of 25% of fertilizer so if we use azospirillium and phosphobacteria then we can save 25% nitrogen so we have we are required to add chemical fertilizer less about 25% top dressing after each harvest we should have to apply 75 To 100 kg nitrogen per hectare, and I told that in one year we have we can harvest seven to eight cuts. Spacing and seed rate fifty by fifty centimeter propagation it by rooted slip of st or stem cutting. So here you can see stem cutting. Forty thousand rooted slip or stem cutting are required to plant one hectare planting. <clears throat> so it is a figure. It is here stem cutting, and here. So the planting method. So you can you see that it is germinated when we transplanting the one stem cutting. Then a high amount of oxalic acid in forage impair calcium assimilation. Affected animal fall down, fall rate increases. The tender leaves of high bean apple contain three to six percent oxalic that is poisonous to the animals. To avoid this poisoning effect. it should be harvested at 40 to 45 days and these powders should be fed along with the legume legume powder to the animals oxalate exhibits symptoms of calcium deficiency in animals nitrate application resulted in higher content of soluble and total oxalate than ammonium application so we have to apply nitrogen to the ammonium sulfate and not potassium nitrate with increase harvesting interval object content so a decreasing trend we have observed that some farmers are continuously feed the hybrid apiary starting from 20 to 25 days growth of hybrid apiary but it is not advisable because at that time it contain 3 to 6 percent oxalate and it is a poison to the animals and there you will find the calcium deficiency when we are feeding to the animal having high oxalate content then harvesting the first cut is taken from 60 to 75 days after planting keep 5 cm double height from the soil or ground level subsequent cuts are taken at after 30 45 days annually at least 6 to 8 cut we can harvest it so you can see it is a hybrid napier yani the laborers are harvesting the hybrid napier yield on an average 250 to 350 metric ton per hectare per year green fodder vegetative growth is reduced to dormant during winter you know that this grass mostly grown in tropical climate so in winter season in india also the there will be low fodder productivity due to cold season and you see here the nutritive value diameter 16.20% cool protein 9.38% calcium 0.88% phosphorus 0.24% oxalate 2.97% digestibility 58% Hybrid hybrid napier grass, the variety CO three, and you can see the sixteen feet height. 
Dairy farming may be support to agriculture to reduce the risk of crop failure. However, success of dairy farming largely depends on the feed and fodder of high nutritional value, which accounts for 65 to 70 percent expenses incurred over the animal phase. So, we grow the fodder crops and supply the fodder crop to the animals, to the milch animals, either cows or buffaloes, then we are getting the higher profit because you know that 60 to 70 percent cost expenses incur over the animal, concentrate. So when we are giving the grain fodder to the animal, then there will be less required of the concentrate and we reduce the cost and we are getting more profit. You know that uh, hybrid Napier is a cereal fodder. So <clears throat> you know that uh, animal also requires nutrition fodder. So intercropping of hedge lucerne in hybrid Napier provide crude cool protein means balanced nutrition. So you can grow the hedge lucerne as an intercrop between the hybrid Napier. And you will provide the protein as food to the animals and we are getting the higher milk production. Super Napier. What is the speciality, speciality of the Super Napier? So it is a fast growth, it is a fasted growth of 10 feet in 59 days, highly in other words, 500 ton metric per, per, per hectare. We can feed to 50 dairy cows for 12 months. Base nutrition presence of 16 to 18 percent protein. And on average, other variety have about 9 to 10 percent protein. But here you can find 16 to 18 percent protein. That is very important for animal, particularly for dairy cows, to produce more milk. All weather friendly growth. Dr. Kailas Thong says that it is a drought resistant and can, can grow any kind of location irrespective of wet or dry season. The only need is the soil rich in organic matter that make it preferably suitable for Indian subcontinent. Easy storage, this has water soluble carbonate eating, which means no need to additive store this plant silage. So I told that that variety, variety was developed at uh, Thailand Super Napier. So it is a king of Napier. Super Napier. So I told that at NDDB farm near Anand, Gujarat, they have grown the Super Napier and they sold the stem cutting ranges from 1.5 to 2 rupees per stem cutting. So you can see the growth of the super Napier grass. Tremendous growth. So in India, one farm, Kaveri goat farm, has also produced, multiplied the super Napier. It is also known as Panchog one. Super Napier is also known as Panchong one. The only Napier variety in Asia giving highest crude protein 14 to 18 percent. All over India delivery. They are gave the supply the stem cutting on the payment basis to the dairy farmer or dairy uh, gausala. Visibility of biogas production from Napier grass. So you know that in Thailand, School of Renewable Energy Technology Faculty of Science, Thailand. So it is a in it is organic compositions are an ideal feedstock for biogas production. So they can prepare the biogas from the hybrid napier. Economic analysis of biogas obtained from the experiment with liquid petroleum gas LPG with benefit cost ratio BC ratio greater than one. Suggested that the napier grass is considered as a potential energy crop. So now days the farmers are growing the hybrid Napier and sold to the biogas company 
to produce the LPG gas. So here I have given one figure, tile and grass collection. You see here the grass collection, then silage protection, preparation, then trans transportation of grass. Here you can see transportation of grasses, crushing machine, and small particle of grasses. So here you can see small particle, it is hybrid napier. Then you can see transportation, then it requires very small particle of grasses of hybrid napier. Grass silage for biogas production. So I told that it was published in th at Thailand. And they have already started to produce the LPG gas from the hybrid napier. So recommendation for farming community published by myself, retired scientist Anand. So intercropping of legume in hybrid napier middle bizarre condition. I have done this work on 1984 to 86. Then second, intercropping of legume in hybrid napier not Gujarat condition so that work was uh, carried out in, in 1984 to 88. So in middle Gujarat means uh, in a middle Gujarat condition, where in non Gujarat means uh, Palanpur, Banaskata, Sarbha, Sarbha district. Then third one, yield and quality of hybrid nephew variety is affected by spacing and nitrogen application. 1997 to 2000 by JP Adhanati and Barwari and Isisadun myself. Then Yadvendra JP and myself round the year green product production for announcing milk production and it was published in Indian Pharma Digest. I have carried out forest work at main forest station on an agriculture city from 1982 to 2006. I have conducted different agronomic practices and nutrient management experiment on different forest crop to find out the best treatment on the basis of higher forage crop production and forage quality. We have made 29 forage recommendation to the dairy farmers for obtaining higher forage crop productivity and net return. If any dairy farmer want my advice on forage production and quality, please contact on my email at lpc12 at the rate of gmail.com. If you have liked my video on hybrid napier grass, a boon to forage production, please subscribe my video Thank you. Thank you.